DNA and race. You may or may not have run across the saying that race is a social construct. Likewise, that race does not exist in a biological sense. People take DNA tests that offer ethnicity estimates, and those tests identify the various different regions that their ancestors hailed from. And depending on the test taker, those results can be similar or radically different even within their perceived um, group or population, shared population. We also see different results from the same test taker if they take a test with different companies. And these differences occur due to overlap among populations as well as overlap within populations. And they're due to the different metrics that are used from the different companies as well. It is also apparent that humans can look different when it comes to skin, hair, eye color, to name a few things. And then again, there's also overlap similarities among people. Folks also come from different geographic locations where their families have been, likely for generations, and, and that certain family histories differ with no apparent connections to other populations to one degree or the other. And again, at times, there's overlap. People also differ in languages, and let's not forget the many religions and customs and so on. So people are different in many ways according to our senses and observations. And again, to be fair, we also see similarities between people. We know people from different backgrounds have and do travel, relocate to other places. Sometimes different cultures join and they create descendants and they end up sharing cultures in various combinations. This is not only true in, in the Americas, but around the world. And if examined further, it has happened throughout the ages. But some would consider none of this to be connected to their own family history. All that said, it's repeatedly voiced in scientific literature that races do not exist in any biological sense. Instead, we hear that race is a social construct and that there's only one race, the human race. So let's unpack some of this. People often go under the assumption during discussions based on non-established definitions, and that allows for endless confusion when trying to communicate. It makes it difficult to arrive at understanding. So definitions are used so we can actually know what things mean and further the, the discussion. And there are likewise layers or different meanings to words that could confuse a conversation as well. So to start with, let's look at the term social construct. From dictionary.com, a social construct is a complex concept or practice shared by a society or group not arising from any natural or innate source, but built on the assumptions upheld, usually tactly, by its members. And from sociologydictionary.org, a social construct of race is defined as the idea that race is not biologically defined, but socially constructed. Now let's look at some definitions for the meaning of race. From Cambridge Dictionary, race, one of the main groups to which people are often considered to belong based on physical characteristics that they are perceived to share, such as skin color, eye shape, etc. And a group of people who share the same language, history, characteristics, etc. From Britannica, race, the idea that the human species is divided into distinct groups on the basis of inherited physical and behavioral differences. And it goes on to say, genetic studies in the late 20th century refuted the existence of biogenetically distinct races, and scholars now argue that races are a cultural intervention reflecting specific attitudes and beliefs that were imposed on different populations in the wake of Western European conquests beginning in the 15th century. From the United States Census Bureau, the Census Bureau defines race as a person's self-identification with one or more social groups. An individual can report as white, black, or African American, Asian, American Indian, and Alaskan Native, Native Hawaiian, and other Pacific Islander, or some other race. Survey respondents may report multiple races. It further reads, what is ethnicity? Ethnicity determines whether a person is of Hispanic origin or not. For this reason, ethnicity is broken out in two categories, Hispanic or Latino and not Hispanic or Latino. Hispanics may report as any race. Under the what region of origin does census consider for each race category, we see this chart. For white, they include Europe, Middle East, and North Africa. For black or African American, they include Africa. Under American Indian or Alaskan Native, North, South, and Central America. For Asian, Far East, East Asian, and India. For Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, they include Hawaii, Guam, Samoa, and Pacific Islands. 
These definitions of race suggest geographic, cultural, and political, and physical characteristics in order to arrive at the meaning. Some of these definitions also explain race in a strictly social term rather than biological one. So, the category of race through different shifts across time depended and were tweaked for any number of reasons. Color and bone structure along with other traits have been used to categorize people into different races. In other cases, people may associate languages and religions with race. Race also depended on government policies from country to country around the world. And within those countries, it could differ among the population at large, having their own understanding compared to their government's reckoning. So let's look at the genetics. Our DNA is made up of four letters that repeat billions of times within our genome. And they're A's, T's, C's, and G's. Every time someone is born, they receive half of their genes from their mother and the other half from their father and a process of recombination also occurs. These letters get chopped up and restitched together every time a person is born. And when comparing letters with others, when certain stretches match between people, it denotes common ancestry. The larger the stretches that match between people, the closer the relationship is. The smaller the shared stretches of DNA between two people, the more distant a shared common ancestor there would be. When people settle in an area and produce descendants over and over for generations, their shared DNA is closer as it has spread within that group, that population, over and over again. They'll show certain similar segments with, within their population. But they're still sharing the same DNA letters with other groups from other areas. At the genetic level, all humanity shares the same DNA, although the reordering of the letter sequences may be chopped up in different ways. The DNA test can estimate your ethnicity due to similar stretches of shared DNA, but it's a combination of letters that they're using to arrive at that result. Those patterns of letters are similar to certain locations, but there's overlap with other people. Other people meaning with all other people. So shared DNA also blends in with people from neighboring areas, but not just those neighbors. Humans share DNA across the world like a gradient and also like a spider's web, as connections across time between civilizations are all linked. From the National Human Genome Research Institute, all human beings are 99.9% identical in their genetic makeup. Differences in the remaining 0.1% hold important clues about causes of diseases. From the paper Race and Genetics versus Race in Genetics, the completion of the Human Genome Project in 2003 confirmed humans are 99.9 .9 identical at the DNA level and there is no genetic basis for race. Modern humans spread out of Africa, settled, had descendants, people from that group broke off, settled someplace else, reproduced, and this repeated over and over, and it repeats as well today. We all share the same genetic letters recombined over and over, and people do have adaptive traits within that, depending on where they settle due to climate and other factors. But there's no gene that denotes different races within humans. We're all the product of countless mixing across time over and over again, regardless of appearance. From the same paper, Race and Genetics versus Race in Genetics, a portion of the African population migrated out of Africa 30 to 50,000 years ago, settled at some distance from the parent population and became a reproductive group. A portion of this second group migrated, settled at some distance, and again reproduced. Migration, settling, reproduction, and further migration resulted in a gradient of alleles across a geographical range. It's impossible to specify a specific allele or an allele frequency that would typify African ancestry for 1.3 billion Africans on the African continent or 45 million African Americans in the U.S. People of African ancestry do not represent a homogeneous group. Only those who share direct ancestors, parents, grandparents, and all generations of great-grandparents are genetically related. As the number of ancestors increases exponentially going back in time, the number of actual humans on the planet decreases. Therefore, it is apparent that biological lineages must converge around shared ancestors, thus increasing the potential for genetic 
similarity among all modern humans. Any individual's genome is the result of reproduction of direct ancestors. Direct ancestors who are 99.9% .9 identical at the DNA level. From the paper called Biological Races in Humans. Skin color is historically the locally adaptive trait most commonly considered by European cultures as a racial trait in humans. Skin color is an adaptation to the amount of ultraviolet radiation in the environment. Dark skins are adaptive in high UV environments in order to protect from radiation damage that can kill and burn cells and damage DNA if not protected by melanin. And light skins are adaptive to low UV environments in order to make sufficient vitamin D, which requires UV. The geographic distribution of skin color follows the environmental factor of UV intensity. Skin color differences do not reflect overall genetic divergence. For example, the native peoples with the darkest skins live in tropical Africa and Melanesia. The dark skins of African Melanesians are adaptive to the high UV found in those areas. Because Africans and Melanesians live on opposite sides of the world, they are more highly genetically differentiated than many other human populations despite their similar skin colors. Europeans who are geographically intermediate between Africa and Melanesia are likewise intermediate at the molecular genetic level between Africans and Melanesians. Even though Europeans have light skins, they are adapted to the low UV environment of Europe. Skin color in humans are not a reliable indicator of overall genetic differentiation of evolutionary history. Moreover, skin color varies continuously among humans in a clinical fashion rather than categorical ecotypes. Hence, there's a compelling biological reason to exclude skin color as the racially defining adaptive trait under the ecotype concept of race. Although physical characteristics in people offer clues according to what we know about history as to where they may hail from ancestrally, and although color has been used to categorize populations into different races, physical traits do not denote race at the genetic level. In other words, people's appearance may stick out like a sore thumb, and this is accompanied with historical notions about races, but none of it has to do with races of humans. Genetically, human races don't exist. Culturally and politically is another matter. So people thinking that Africans, Asians, or Europeans are, are races are incorrect genetically speaking. Those categories are social and political ones. Genetically, the issue is that all these groups share DNA with each other, you know. And among people we consider a part of the same groups or within the same groups, there's also physical variation. There are Europeans with different hair, eyes, skin colors, and not only are these features a gradient geographically speaking, these features likewise vary within those same populations and within country borders. Appearances are gradients among people. People that still believe in different human races may rarely ask themselves the question, where does one supposed race start and end, and what is the cutoff point between one race or the other? And the answer is, there's none, only a gradient of one human race that share the same DNA, but do have adaptive traits which certain people regard as race, you know, due to historical reasons. Returning to the paper called Race and Genetics versus Race in Genetics, However, the species Homo sapiens cannot be further subdivided into subspecies which are physically and genetically different. Thus, for Homo sapiens, the species and subspecies are the same. In 2003, Phase 1 of the Human Genome Project demonstrated that humans populating the Earth today are on average 99.9 .9 identical at the DNA level. There is no genetic basis for race, and there is more genetic variation within a race than between them. In addition, genetic isolation, sharp boundaries, and distinct evolutionary lineages of races do not exist. Thus, the idea of race as a genetic category was presumably put to rest. The continued acceptance of race as an appropriate biological category would have to be predicated on data indicating that there are genes distinct to one race that are transcribed in one race but not another and human genetic variation is not continuous. 
This is distinct from small differences in allele frequencies due to mutations in a given family's genetic lineage. From my heritage, ethnicities around the world, we read, Discover the most common ethnicities in each country and the top countries for each ethnicity according to MyHeritage DNA users' data. So as examples of gene flow around the world, we'll look at some of these countries. For the top ethnicities in the U.S., we see English, Scandinavian, North and West European, Iberian, and East European. The percentages represent the portion of MyHeritage DNA users in the U.S. who have that ethnicity. As an example, it does not mean that 44.3% of the U.S. is English. It just means that 44.3% of the U.S. population has some English ancestry. And this according to the data that this company has. If we look at specific states such as Ohio as an example, we find these ethnicity percentages there. Again, people in Ohio could have any combination of these ethnicities or others. It does not mean that 48% of the population tested is English, only that 48% of the population has English to one degree or another. If we look at the UK, we find ethnicities of English, Scandinavian, Irish, Scottish, Welsh, North and West European, and Iberian. And again, it's not that 59.2% of the UK population is English, genetically speaking. It's that 59.2% of the UK population has English ancestry to one degree or the other. The names used here for different ethnicities, such as English or Iberian, are categories that can be further broken down. They're simply placeholders so people can trace their family origins, but the DNA between these people and others is simply the same DNA. The way they arrive at these estimates are through stretches of DNA letters that are similar in a gradient within that population and between that population. Um, that's why many times results confuse people. DNA is all too similar and it all blends. It's blended. There's nothing genetically racial about it, however tempting it may be to people with certain notions. Um, all it is is DNA letter differences in segments from place to place from the same DNA letters belonging to all humans on Earth. To drive this home, if one were to take their raw DNA and upload it to sites such as GEDmatch, their calculators further break down one's DNA. What was English or Iberian then becomes breakdowns of other earlier populations. So, you, you'll not find a single person uploading their raw DNA to GEDmatch representing anything close to a pure race that hails from one location across the ages. And the estimates we receive are simply breakdowns that can be further broken down over and over again. So there's no such thing as mixed and non-mixed people. Genetically, everyone is mixed. Alright, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.